Yo guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video. I'm back. Um, haven't made a video in like a month, but um, yeah. So I guess I'm just gonna be explaining where I was, how I got to where I was, why I left, and how I got back. So um, I really don't know where to start. So it was like in the middle of summer, sometime around like July, uh, June rather. My mom had went to rehab to get help for her drinking problem, and she went. And because uh, my mom wasn't home, who was the legal guardian of me, child services got involved, and they came, and they said that I had to, you know, go with them, and they said that, you know, I was in custody of them now. But obviously, I didn't listen, because why would I go with people I'd don't know um for no apparent reason so you know i didn't go with him and i yeah i made it harder on myself but oh well so for the whole month of june and july when my mom was away at rehab i kind of like do everything on my own like i had to drive drive her car uh to doctor's appointments to dentist appointments to whatever it may be by myself i drive drive the car to the store and I didn't trust my grandparents to drive because neither of them had a license, neither did I. But it was, it was worse because they couldn't, um, my grandma can't see the best and my grandfather is deaf. So it's like, you know, I'm not just gonna have them drive the car and crash it. So I just drove them places where they needed to go. I asked them where they needed to go and I made time and I also had to make time for football too, and, and all my, all that stuff, hanging out with my friends, hanging out with my girlfriend, just, you know, anything that I had to do, I made time for it, and I made sure to just fit it in my schedule. And surprisingly, I did it, and it actually was somehow, somewhat working. So then when I didn't comply with child services and the law enforcement law enforcement in my town, they would send like more law enforcement after me. Like I remember at one time there was five police at my house looking for me. The next day there was six, so on and so on. So the numbers kept increasing and I still kept running. You know, I would just be running from the cops and running from child services every, every, every day and everything. And my friends knew about it. My girlfriend knew about it. It wasn't something I was proud of, but like I was, I was like, well, you know, it is what it is. I just gotta do this. And it's not really something that I'm proud of, but it's not something I'm ashamed of either. So then uh, I decided to give myself up. And what I mean by giving myself up is I purposely got caught so I could escape child services custody. And that's exactly what I did. So, yeah so i allowed them to take me they put me in handcuffs took me to the courthouse because they were going to find a place for me to live and i i escaped but you know i made myself cry made myself all sad and everything so <laughs> it was really it was really a very elaborate plan and you know everything worked out that day the next day was a different story the next day they tracked where my phone was well i'm gonna continue talking about the previous day the previous day when i escaped cps custody they had, uh sent 16 police officers after me on foot and then um eight patrol cars so yeah so it was pretty much like the whole police force in my town coming after me because I was just trying to live my life and be myself and I was thinking there's probably worse problems like there's probably worse people than me like I didn't do anything wrong you know like I'm just trying to live my life and do things I have to do and just be, you know be independent take care of myself and there's like 
16 police officers chasing me all around town. And, you know, that day I was running through random people's houses, pretty much running so my life depended on it because it did. And the next day I got found in a hotel room because they tracked my phone and they took me to a group home and I was gone for a month and a week. And my girlfriend went over to my house and my grandfather watched her have a complete uh, wreck, a complete mental breakdown, like, at my house. And I just, I, like, I know I didn't do this. Like, I have no, this isn't my fault why I got taken, but I missed so much. And she, she was just distraught, completely distraught. And I feel guilty in a way for it. So... Um, in the end, I'd gotten taken to this facility that, um, had a whole bunch of kids at it, uh, mostly kids that had no place to go, and then there were some kids there that needed, like, help because they had medical and physical disabilities, and then there were other kids there who committed crimes that were waiting to be booked and sent to jail, um, you know, crimes like arson simple assault attempted murder stuff like that so it was pretty much where i got sent it was pretty much a, a prison but not really a prison it was like kind of juvenile you know juvenile hall but like not really i mean so it's pretty much juvie but a little bit watered down and so i spent a month and five days there, so about 35 days that I was gone. Um, my my girlfriend missed me a, a, a lot, like more than most people did. My best friend missed me. My best friend's girlfriend missed me. So everybody was really, really, really missing me. And I missed them too. Like I didn't sleep for a straight like 35 days. <laughs> you know, every single day I was there, I had trouble sleeping because it was very traumatizing and it was a very bad experience. And I didn't really ever think that I was going to come back. Like, and because of that, I had ran from the facility the fourth day that I was even there. So I ran from the facility and then, you know because they were transferring me to a different building. So because I was a flight risk, because I had ran from, from the police back home, they had to, any anytime that they transported somebody that was a flight risk, they had to put them in handcuffs and take them and, and leg shackles and take them to wherever they were gonna go. So, I, you know, I, I thought I could run and I had a whole plan and I did, and it was a pretty smart plan. Any time that I saw a staff member there or a police member that was, you know, a police officer that was chasing me, I would just change and change the pair of clothes that I was wearing because I wore every single pair of clothes that I had brought there or that had been given to me from my parents that dropped it off there. And I had, you know, I had changed, you know, a different pair of clothes anytime I saw one of the staff members that was chasing after me when I was running. So they, you know, when that, the next time they saw me, they couldn't just, um, say on the walkie talkies or, or on the, on the radios, he's wearing like a red shirt because that, if they say he's wearing a red shirt, I'd just change that shirt. And then, and then they'd be like, oh, well he's, he's now he's wearing like a black shirt or a blue shirt or a, a white shirt or something like that. So it was never the same color that was you know, they describe, because they, to find, to, you know, to tell other people around you, you know, other staff members, they had to describe what I was wearing, but they never could, and that's how I was able to get away in the first place, because they had never, um, they, they, they didn't know what, 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 uh, clothes I was wearing, and it was really hard for them to, to, um, figure that out, so, I eventually, um, I had found this river 
and I, I lost my shoes in the river. I lost, you know, some of my clothes in the river. I lost whatever was in my pocket. And this necklace, um, I bought uh, heart necklaces that connect together. So this is half of a heart and my girlfriend has the other half and they, they connect together. And we, and when I jumped in the river, I lost that necklace and it never had a, uh, never had a, um, kind of like a, a white cord on it like it is now. It had like a black metal, metal chain. And, uh, when I ran and I jumped in the river, I had lost that whole thing. And, you know, the handcuffs came loose. So I was able to sift through, not, not the river, but everything from that river floated down to a creek that was right down the stream. So I went to the end of the creek where it was, and I just sifted through the creek to really try and find um, this necklace because I had given the other one to my girlfriend and they connect and it was matching. And I, I just, I didn't want to come back home and say, Hey, I lost it because there'd be no point in the necklace in the first place. And you know, like it's, it's a really cute thing and I, I love her a lot. And I don't, I don't, I didn't want to come back and say, I lost this, you know, can we buy another one? Cause it wasn't cheap. It was like $40 for one. So, and some people don't have $40 just to buy a new one. So that's what happened. So when I finally got back last Thursday, um, everybody was texting me. Everybody's been wanting to hang out with me. I missed the, the, the rest of football training, like the, the practices in the summer. So I, I missed the rest of summer training. And our first football game was last Friday. And we have a game this Friday at home. So I'm gonna go and stand on the sidelines with my teammates. And then next week I'm gonna practice the whole week and get back in the swing of things and play football. You know, play the game I love so much. Like, um, so that's what I'm doing and that's my plan. So that's where I've been, that's what happened to me. And I'm just so glad to be back. So glad to be back with like my friends, my family and everybody. And uh, my best friend Jacob, his his girlfriend's parents have take you know taken me in, so I'm living with them now, and it's such a good opportunity because my girlfriend is his girlfriend's best. Well, my girlfriend is my best friend's girlfriend. What? <laughs> no, my my girlfriend is best friends with my best friend's girlfriend. So me and my best friend are, you know, friends. We've been friends for eight years and our girlfriends are friends. So that's good. So I can literally see my girlfriend whenever she wants and she has a key to the house and everything. And like besides football and my mom and, you know, school, like she's really all I care about. She's really important to me and everything. So, you know, as one thinks. So that's where I've been. Um, I, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to my story um, about where I've been running from the cops and everything. So <laughs> that's about it. Um, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys all whenever I make another video.